appreciate the love that this church has shown and the acceptance because a lot of times on Wednesday nights when I do Bible study, I have people come up to me and encourage me and, and, and uh, just say kind words to me. And I want you to know that it really does mean a lot. It's not something that I, that I take for granted because I told somebody out there a minute ago, it's not my show. This is about Jesus Christ and Him alone. And when I come in here and when I stand up here, I take very seriously um, the assignment that God has for me. And so when Howie asked me to, I, you know, I got a little bit nervous right off the bat because Sunday morning is typically a lot bigger crowd than, than Wednesday night. The second service always is. So, And I've always been a little bit nervous about speaking in front of people. But when God calls you to do something, you don't have a choice. You can run, but Jones found out you can't hide. Amen. And, and the fact of the matter is I've been apprehended. So I don't have a choice. I, I feel like Paul when he said, "The Lord, they, you know, no matter what He's got to do, He's going to find you. If you've been chosen for His work, He'll find you wherever you are." So this morning, um, we're going to talk about something that Howie had mentioned to me um, a few, a couple weeks ago. And over the past week, I've learned a lot about it. And I want you to know that, um, like I said a minute ago, I take very seriously this. This is Sunday morning, guys. This is your time. This is a day when the world sleeps in. But this is a day when the people of God keep the Sabbath day holy. This is a day that, that they come to church to give to God the first fruits of their day and the first fruits of their week. And so this is a, a, a big challenge and a big responsibility. When I hear how he talked about how a pastor or a, a leader had talked about the sheep being dumb, the guy's got it all wrong. I want to tell you in Ezekiel chapter, uh, I wrote it down here, Ezekiel chapter 34, the Lord had a, uh, he had a conversation with the shepherds of Israel. And he talked about how you've not fed my people. Huh. And so the responsibility on the ministry is this. God says the welfare of the sheep, I will require it in your hands. Woo. Pastors, preachers, teachers, leaders, the fact of the matter is everybody you see from wall to wall, God is going to require it in your hands. What have you done to feed the sheep? What have you done to nourish the sheep? And so we owe, we owe the people of God, and I'm just talking to leadership right now, and myself. I owe the people of God more than a microwave message when I come up here. Amen. I owe the people of God the Word of God for Impact Life Church in Joplin, Missouri. Amen. That's what you're owed when you come in here. Woo! And you should expect nothing less than that when somebody walks to this pulpit. If they don't walk to the pulpit with just a motivating speech. That doesn't change anybody's life. That's right. The Word of God will change your life. And so it's important as pastors that we hear what the Lord says so we can give it to the people. And I think that we have uh, pastors and leaders in this church that have that same heart. And that's how seriously I take it, and that's the responsibility that I'm given, is to feed the sheep of God. Jesus told Peter, he said, if you love me, three times he told him this. Now Peter had just denied the Lord three times, not long before. And Peter said, you know, Lord, you know my heart, you know all things, and you know that I love you. And the final words that Jesus left him with out of that conversation were that feed my sheep. That's right. You love the people of God, you love Jesus. You don't love the people of God, no. you don't know Jesus. That's the truth. And, that's, and, and you know, I know we've only got a few leaders here today, and, and I challenge myself with that, but every leader in Joplin and every leader in the body of Christ everywhere needs to hear that message. Because it's just that important. So my desire today is really to help you in your walk with God. And this subject really, guys, is um, pretty intense. And I've talked to several people over the last few days, people who are mentors, people who are elders in my life. And uh, I've talked to them and I've, I've said, guys, is this too intense? Is this, um, I don't want to be harsh. I don't, I don't want people walking away feeling like they've been uh, beat down. So, and, and I've gotten the blessing from every one of them on this message. So I'm trusting that that it'll be well received because I've, I've prayed about it and I believe I have what God wants me to say today. So Amen. with that being said, we're going to talk about spiritual authority today. And um, authority is not the most popular subject when you're talking about a world that's filled with sin, especially when you're talking about a God who's called us to come out of a life of sin. Authority is not a popular subject in really any realm today, and I, I cringe to say this because there's so many, so many things that go into this, but Authority is not a popular subject in marriage. Authority is not popular in the home. Authority is not popular at work. Right. It's just not a popular subject. And yet every domain has established authority. That's right. City, state, federal, international. Even in the spiritual, there is established authority. Amen. 
So the fact is that humanity needs now and has always needed authority. Never has there been a time in history where humanity hasn't needed authority. We got a close-up of it in the United States in 2005 when Hurricane Katrina swept into New Orleans and damaged the city, almost completely destroyed it, handicapped law enforcement. And what happened was, day by day went by, and in the absence of authority, the wickedness of man was revealed. That's right. Yeah. Joplin had a great response a couple months ago. And, and, and I'm so thankful for the response of, of FEMA and all the, all the churches. And, and really, I, the churches are, are coming for nothing. There, there's also the Red Cross. There's all these different groups that have come, and the response has been tremendous. But had they not had law enforcement, had authority not still been in place like it was in New Orleans, we probably would have seen a lot more of the wickedness of man be revealed. Uh -huh. And so much for the theory that people are basically good. I got saved when I realized I wasn't basically good. <laughs> I got saved when I realized that my life and my way was destroying me and was destroying people around me. So we need authority. Amen? Amen. We need authority. Just as it's needed in the natural, it's also needed in the spiritual. Scripture's filled with spiritual causes and natural effects. What we see in the natural is based on things that happen in the spiritual. And so we need authority. The, the reason why it's so important is because submission to God's authority causes us to live an overcoming life. You show me someone that says, I will not obey and I will not submit, I'll show you someone that will never live for Jesus Christ. And in the moment that they say that, they have denied Him. And I'll, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Submission to God's authority is what will cause us to live an empowering life. Amen. We're going to talk about that. Well, you have to you have to hear the whole thing to get the full scope of this because uh, number one, we're called to deny ourselves. So that's the first thing we got to do. But then the life of blessing comes after that. So I want to talk just for a little bit about our government, the United States, how we work. In the U.S., we have a system of government called democracy. Democracy is defined by Wikipedia as a form of government where all eligible people have equal say in the decision-making process. It's a system that strives to be fair, open-minded, and many consider, I believe so too, as far as governing man, it's a, it's a good system. Democracy is a good system, and it's worked pretty well for us. Most of us, that's all we know. Most of us were born here, we've lived here our whole lives, and we'll probably die here. Democracy is all we've ever known. But I want to go back to basic Christianity and talk, because what we've been called into is not a democracy. Amen. I got one amen out of that. What we've been called into, I heard one preacher say, if you can't give me a Pentecostal amen, give me a Methodist nod. I'm the same way. I'm, I'm not a real vocal person. Somebody like, like Josh calls it out of me. I, somebody calls it out of me, I'll be vocal, I'll be loud. But it, the rest of the time, I'm pretty quiet. But what we've been called into is not a democracy. Right. Yeah. There's people acting like, and I see this all the time, guys. You guys see it too. People act like the democracy is what blessed this country. Wrong. God blessed our democracy. <laughs> That's where the blessing comes from. Not from the democracy. Democracy has failed in many other parts of the world. It's been blessed by God. And our recognition at the roots of our country of who He is and His supreme authority. That's right. John the Baptist, one of my favorite characters in all the Bible. He was ordained by God to prepare the way for Jesus. Specifically chosen. This was his assignment. He was anointed. He was bold. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 2 says that John came preaching. And listen to this because this is where we've got to get started. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom. A kingdom is very different from a democracy. That's right. Now John gets put in prison and the Bible says that Jesus begins his ministry. In Matthew 4, 17, it says that Jesus began to preach the very same thing that the man of God before him had preached. The very same words, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So, do we hear repentance that often in church today? I mean, this church we do. We hear about repentance. But, I mean, the church in general. Do we really hear about repentance? I hear a lot about accepting Jesus as our personal Savior, but Jesus said, you repent. This must be the beginning of our walk with God. Repentance means to walk away from your sin. John said, when they said, well, what do you think we ought to do? He said, repent and bear fruits worthy of repentance. Show your repentance in what you do. So Jesus comes preaching the exact same message of the kingdom. A kingdom is different from a democracy. It is defined as the realm of a sovereignty. In a kingdom, the king is the supreme authority. Amen. 
This is a hard concept to wrap our minds around, but to put it very simply, for the democratic mind to understand this, this is a kingdom, we have a king. Amen? Amen. Everybody know who that king is? Jesus. Jesus. And the number one, the first point I want to make today um, in this sermon, I'm going, to, I'm going to try to make three points, and I'm going to probably spend more time on this one than any. But the number one point is that Jesus is the supreme authority. You cannot be baptized into the body of Christ without first understanding that He is the supreme authority. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 28, 18, you guys, all right, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority, now I want you to understand this because in society today, and I'll challenge you to, to, to go home and, and look at this and tell me if there's been a watered down version of who Jesus is. Jesus is my homeboy. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is my friend. He is. He's my father. Amen. But at the same time, he's my Lord and he's my God. And in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus spoke of this himself. He said, all authority, listen guys, in heaven, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. It's good. Philippians chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. Let's get the Apostle Paul's perspective on this. Let's see what this man of God said about Jesus. Jesus has said it about himself. Now what's Paul say? Philippians 2, 8 through 11, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Right. That at the name of Jesus, listen to this guys, this is ultimate authority being declared by the man of God. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, in earth, and under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The church today desperately needs a revelation of this concept. And remember, this is the first point. It's going to be a progression, but we've got to get the first point down. And we desperately need a revelation of this. Thomas said, he fell at the feet of Jesus and he said, my Lord and my God. Yes, glory to God. He didn't just say my Savior. He didn't just say my friend. That word Lord means several different things. It could mean sir if you were talking to a normal person. But in Jesus, I, I looked it up, and here's, here's the definition of the Greek dictionary from the strongest importance. It, it has two words in it that stood out to me, master and controller. That's what Jesus came to be. And that's what we've got to understand about this, this kingdom concept is that he is the king. I was watching uh, CNN a while back, and they had a panel on there, and they were uh, discussing an issue in society, a social issue. And... Uh, and I believe in, in loving everybody. And Jesus taught us that. He taught us to love everyone, regardless of what their lifestyle or whatever. Jesus loved us while we were still sinners. So we can love others while they're still sinners. Amen? Amen. And I was watching this panel on CNN, and they were talking. And, and this one guy, in defending a sinful lifestyle, in defending it, he made this comment. He said, isn't that what Jesus was all about anyway? Love and acceptance? Jesus was the demonstration of God's love. But acceptance? Jesus came and preached a message of repent. That's right. Which means to turn away from your ways, not to accept. <laughs> Jesus came and he said this, a man must deny himself. 